Hi, welcome to this tutorial. We're going to try and uh, show you some quick ways to make uh, scenarios for Train Simulator 2012. One of the things that I always advise is when you're editing, use a windowed screen and not full screen. It just makes it easy to dive in and out. So on the settings page, there is screen resolution and full screen checkbox. Uh, make sure you select a screen resolution that is smaller than that of your desktop screen. It needs to be smaller in both dimensions. And also make sure the full screen button is not checked. And start Train Simulator 2012. Before we can make or edit any scenario, we need to unlock the route. And the way we do this is select a route. So I'm going to click on that drive by route. I'm going to select uh, Port Road in this case. And I'm going to select any standard or free roam scenario that I choose. I'll probably choose that one. And click play. Once in any scenario, in just the same way as you would if you were going to play it, press Control E. You will notice some extra icons in the bottom right hand corner. There is an arrow, which is return back to play mode, and an, a padlock icon. I click or make sure that is unlocked. Exit and return back to the main launch screen for RW. Now we've unlocked the route, we can set about creating our own scenario. To do this, click on the editor button and select the route you wish to make a scenario on on the left hand side panel. I'll select Port Road and click Scenario Editor in the right hand drop down. This then lists all the scenarios um, for the different routes. So I've got Port Road and I could clone or edit them. Um, but on this occasion, I'm going to make a new scenario on Port Road, so new scenario. On the next screen, there is a root origin drop-down box. These are name markers that have been placed in there by the root creator. I'm going to choose Castle Douglas. And I'm actually going to suggest you use a timetable scenario. I find these far less uh, problematic and a lot, a lot more stable than any other, other sort and lets you do some neat tricks as well. So select Timetable Scenario and click on the Create Scenario button. Here I'm going to name my scenario and I'm going to name it One Tutorial Scenario. I'll spell that right one day. And click create. By using the one, it all will always appear at the top of the list. Uh, we can edit the name later uh, to drop it back down and give it a proper name. But while you're working on it, it's just handy. This is the top of the list. Let's click create. When you arrive in the scenario, you will be faced with a, an icon. In this case, it's the timetable with scenario icon. I suggest you click it and move it um, because you don't want it to get stacked up with lots of other um, marker icons you want to be able to select it whenever you can so I'm going to move it down here towards the end of the platform somewhat and put it in a position now this icon will set the opening viewing position for your scenario so as when you enter it and we're looking in a, in a direction. By default, it seems to point north um, all the time. So I'm going to put that at sort of eye line, looking in a way. You can grab hold of the yellow ball and tilt it back a little as well. Um, but as I say it does set the start position for your scenario. Right, it's now time to add some locomotives and some stock. To do this we need to actually select the locomotives first. In the middle left hand fly out um, and there's a little pin in the corner, pin it out and click the blue cube with the orange arrow on it and this will give the object set filter that will appear in the right hand fly out. In the right hand fly out there's a drop down with a list of names of various producers and developers. Uh, I'm biased so I'm going to pick IHH 
and it shows a list of all IHH products so by clicking on the checkbox we can decide we're going to use bonus content we're going to use class 20s I'll use class 40 I'll use class 45 and I'll use the HAA helpers right now if we click we'll go back to the left hand fly out and click the engines and tenders icon and scroll down you will see a list of the locomotives we have added plus the default ones that were already there of course and we'll add a blue disc class 20 I'm going to click on it and click the arrow which will reverse it and I'm going to add a blue disc with a head code and I'm going to drop that one in there like that I now need to add a driver instruction and this is from the uh, top left hand fly out uh, click the driver's icon and place it on the lead locomotive double click the icon and we can name the scenario whatever we want I'll leave it at service one at the moment we can set a start time although this is pretty basic I'll come back to that later and we can set a um, a type for the service a service type these are in priority order so I'm actually going to set this at low speed freight I'm now going to go into the rolling stock list so click the rolling stock icon in the middle fly out and scroll down and I'm going to look for IHH, HAA, Harper and I'm going to drop a few of these in okay we've got a few in there if we press down shift and click on the consist the whole consist will highlight you've selected the whole consist and you can move around uh, keeping the shift key pressed to wherever you want it backwards and forwards etc so I'll place that back there another trick you can do with it is if you double click on it you will see the load box and this will apply to the entire consist by clicking it we've now loaded all the wagons so that should be helpful right okay moving around Some pointers on the locomotive if, you, if I double click on the lead locomotive I get a window on the right hand side there's a top slider which is the initial fuel level the fuel level you start at it's on 100% uh, you know you might want to start it low and have to go to a fuel stop and fill up with fuel further down there is a number string and this is to do with a dynamic number in the situation. Now some of these can get very long sometimes. I'll give you, try and give you some explanation on this particular one. The lead character, in this case it's a dash or a minus sign, is actually a blank. Um, and if I replace it with the Chinaman's top hat, Ch Chinaman's hat that's above shift, key, shift six key, and press enter you should see that it actually adds mini plows if I want to change the 20 space 175 um, the tops number system to pre tops if I change the 20 hash sign that represents 20 blank into blank D8 and press enter and now I've got D8175 the last four digits are the head code in this case it's at hash hash at which represents dot blank blank dot so I'm going to change that to a typical trip working so we'll go uh, 6 T uh, 32 and press enter important thing is it must always have the same number of digits I think it's 13 in this case so there we've got some individuality to our locomotives now it's time to tell it where to go and when. So to do that, we enter the timetable view, which is the bottom left hand icon, the third row down in the top left flyout. Click timetable view. There's a drop down in the left pane, lists all our services. At the moment, we've only got service one. And the details of service one are shown in the right hand panel. If I click on the driver icon, I can rename it here now 
and uh, if I rename this to what we use for the head coat, 6T32 uh, I think it was, and that will rename it. We can also set the time, and in this box we've actually got seconds, so I hate it when locomotives just dart off at the, right at the beginning of the scenario, so I'm just going to put a 20 second delay in there, so it doesn't actually start till 12 o'clock and 20 seconds. This icon here, that is for player service, you can either check or not check, I'll leave it to uh, not checked at the moment, and exit. Now, if it was a player services must have a final destination, uh, AI services, it doesn't matter. Well, that's my experience. So what I'm going to do here is I've scrolled right to the end of the line, and I'm going to send it into this portal, this Rex or portal. And to do that, at the final destination, we select the final destination icon here and click on it in there. Now I could select Rex or portal from the drop down list, but a quicker way very often is to click on the blue cube with arrow next to the title box, set destination, and then click on the portal and it places it in. And there you have a route for one engine. I click OK. I'll now give a quick attempt to set up some conflicting um, AI. So I'm what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop in uh, a class. Uh, I'll drop in a class 44 on this track here and give it a driver instruction. I'm going to call it. A light engine, and I'm going to give it a priority that is higher than um, our low speed freight. So I'm going to give it express freight, and I'm going to set the I'll set the start time in the timetable view. Okay, now we go to timetable view. I'm just going to scroll back now so that I'm back in around Castle Douglas area. Here you can see uh, light class 44 and the 220s with its HA hopper train. So from the top box I'm going to select the light engine consist and at the moment it's got nowhere to go. I'm going to edit the time, I'm going to give this one a 10 second delay for the same reason as before. It's already got express freight and it's already named. And now I'm actually going to send it to the siding at um, the, the side of the platform next to the bay. So to do that I'm going to give it a stop at destination instruction and enter it. And I say I could select it from the drop down list but again I'm going to select the blue cube with arrow and on the map I'm going to click on the siding I want it to go into. Um, other things you can do with this, uh, this percentage here is percentage of line speed and I suggest 75% is pretty quick so I'm going to cut that down to 55 on that. So there we go and that's given that one its instruction. Now I'm all clear, no error messages showing. Okay, what I'm going to do now is actually going to change that to 632 so I'm going to give it 12.01. I don't want it to start. I need to give the light engine a chance to claim the track as it were. Click close, click OK and click play. Save changes to scenario. And thanks for watching. As you'll see the P, the class 4 should move away for this 10 second delay. And Class 20s wait till the end of the service. Thanks for watching. I hope it's some help to you. Thank you.